Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to design a state machine that detects the sequence 1101 including overlapping sequences. But this time not only we will design the state diagram, we will also implement it using logic components. We begin in state 0. If you receive a 0, we stay in this state. The sequence hasn't started yet. But if we get a 1, we move to state 1, which marks the beginning of the sequence. From state 1, if the next bit is 0, we go back to state 0 because the sequence is broken. But if we get another 1, we transition to state 1-1. One, one. In state 1-1, one, one, if the input is 0, we move to state 1-1-0. One, one, but if we receive a 1, we stay in state 1-1. One, one. But why stay in state 1-1 one, one and not go back to state 0? Because although we didn't progress, we haven't broken the sequence either. The most recent two bits are still 1-1. One, one. If we now get a 0, the sequence becomes 1-1-0-0, one, one, zero, zero, which is invalid. The sequence is broken completely. We return to state 0 and start over. If we get a 1, the sequence becomes 1101, one, one, and the output is 1. But instead of going back to state 0, we transition to state 1. Why? Because overlapping is allowed. That last one could be the first bit of the next valid sequence. Now that we have completed the FSM, let's see how we can translate it into logic components and implement it. Hey, if you're finding this helpful so far, do me a quick favor. Hit that subscribe button down below. It really helps the channel. We will start by labeling the states with letters A, B, C, and D to make things more readable. We start with constructing a state transition table. The first column holds the current state. The next columns show the next state, depending on the input X. Let's take state A as an example. If x equals 0, stay in A. Output is z equals 0. If x equals 1, go to B. Output is z equals 0. We continue in the same way to fill the next states and outputs for states B, C, and D. Because we have a total of four states, we will need two bits to encode them y1, y0. We will use gray code, which helps minimize bit changes, especially useful for coronal maps later. Now, we replace each state label A, B, C, D with its corresponding code. Note, y1, y0 represent the present state. y1, y0 capital represent the next state. Since we are using two bits to represent states, we will need two flip-flops to store them. We will use D-type flip-flops. Let's look at the excitation table for D flip-flops. It's simple. The value of D must match the next state you want to reach. For example, to move from 0 to 1, we set D to 1. Now we add two new columns to our state table. D0 for Y0 and D1 for Y1. We calculate the required values of D0 and D1 that will drive the flip plot so that the state changes from Y to the correct next state, Y capital. Let's work through an example and calculate the first row for D0. Current state, Y0 equals 0. If X equals 0, the next state, Y0 capital equals 0, so D0 equals 0. If X equals 1, the next state, is y0 capital equals 1, so d0 equals 1. In the same way, we will fill out the entire state table. Now we want to create the logic expressions for d0 and d1, the input of the flip-flops, and d, the output of the FSM. Since we used gray code earlier, our table is already arranged like a Carnot map. Let's start with d0. We copy the values from the state table into the chrono map. Next, we do the same for D1. 
Finally, we build a kernel map for the output C. We write out the final Boolean expressions. Let's move on to the circuit. We place two D flip-flops to hold the state. We label the outputs of the flip-flops as Y0, the output of the first flip-flop, Y1, the output of the second flip-flop. This represents the current state of the FSM. Finally, we add the logic gates based on the expressions we derived for D0, D1, and Z. And that completes the FSM implementation.